well, can't thank you enough for coming on here. I really do appreciate, you know, taking the time to sit down with me. Um, I've always been like when I first came in, you had already uh, done a lot of stuff. So like there's all the young airmen when, around me when I was in, you were kind of like that dude that everybody was like looking up to. And you, you, you were, um, I think you might've been, uh, when I first got in, I think you might've been around, I think you were first bat still. And then okay. you moved. Uh, and then by the time you got to regiment, uh, you had moved, you just left regiment right when I got there. So it was like, we just, I think we just missed each other, but yeah, you, you've always been one of those dudes that we, uh, we all kind of looked up to and, uh, held in high regard. And, um, so I just want to say that first, right off the bat. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. And then, um, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. I, I know you, um, I, it was so fascinating. You sent me that bio and, uh, I didn't realize your father had, was, a B-17 guy in World War II. So, yeah, tell me a little about about that and about your childhood and how that kind of shaped your decision to join the military. Yeah, so interestingly enough, uh, my dad was about 48 when I was born. So okay. he was still piling, piling away. So <laughs> giddy up. And my mom was uh, just a month shy of 40 okay. when I was born. So, uh, you know, when I grew up, uh, my mom and dad were as old as everybody else's grandma and grandpa, you know, and my <laughs> My brother was uh, drafted for Vietnam. Uh, he's 18 years older than I am. I had a sister oh. that was 21 years older than myself. She passed away in 93. Oh, and then I've got a sister that, that bah, you know, life happens. Uh, the, the tragedy there was, um, you know, Jeannie, she had two daughters and uh, her husband was killed in a car accident back in 1979. Oh, so, so my nieces are kind of like my sisters almost. Uh, they're about six and eight years younger than I am. And, you know, we real close family. Awesome, cool. awesome family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my sister was the best, and she died of kidney cancer. Just up in one day, bam, gets uh, gets cancer, and about six months later, died. So oh my uh, gosh. anyway, uh, so my my dad, yeah, he was uh, in World War II. Uh, he was an old guy in World War II. He flew oh. uh, fifty combat missions out of B seventeen out of North Africa, nice. and um, so he was originally slated to go to to England. And thank goodness he didn't go to Eighth Air Force because uh, probably, you know, the odds were a little bit uh, more stacked against the operators, the B-17s that flew out of England. But All North right. Africa early on, they they almost always had uh, fighters or flak or in, in sometimes many cases, both of them. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I he didn't talk much about it. And I learned later, I actually, after joining the Air Force, went to a, a bomb group reunion or two with him and uh, listen to his buddies talk. And uh, uh, just a quick, quick story there. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go all back and forth. Please. And no, forth, it's okay. Yeah, for sure. But it, would, but it was so cool. And I, I got to make sure I capture that. But uh, I just distinctly remember listening, just just sponging, you know, listening to those warriors talk. And, and you just, you don't know the impact of what they did uh, as airmen. You know, it's here they are, 10 10 person crew in that uh, B-17 and there were over 12,000 B-17s built and over 4,000 were lost in combat. So wow. they lost a ton of B-17s. And anyway, I'm over the shoulder in uh, this uh, old hero and he's got this book out and it's, and it's awesome. And, and he had to turn to a page that had a full B-17 in flight. And then the next picture, it was, it was hit by flak and it started to come apart. And then the last picture is this little tail section. And I said, and I'm listening to him talk. And I said, hey, I, I heard about this story that somebody survived, you know, one of these crashes where the B-17 was totally destroyed. And there it is. Uh, boom. It glides down. It was perfectly, uh, you know, just had a nice glide slope to it. And it crash landed. And the tail gunner gets out and gets captured. Oh and that was gosh. him. And that was him. <laughs> oh, really? So, no, yeah, he goes, oh. yeah, that was me. And then he, he continues to <laughs> flip through the pages and he's got all of his uh, uh, mementos from prison, uh, prisoner of war camp. And oh, just, wow. Unbelievable. Just totally fascinating. And, yeah. And listening to the, you know, they had a lot of tragedy uh, in training, as you can imagine. You know, some yeah. of those guys, you know, they threw them in airplanes. You know, some of the pilots were... 19 20 21 years old and my dad was like 25 years old and so he was the old guy of the crew but <laughs> he he and his crew did the first 25 missions and said you know what let's we've been pretty successful let's do another 25 
so we don't end up going back. And then, because the rumor already was, is that if you go back, you might go over to the Asia uh, Pacific Pacific area of operations, Pacific yeah, yeah. theater of operations, and uh, have to do something in maybe a 29 or something to that effect, because they didn't yeah. run many B-17s over in the Pacific. So they just, they did the 50 and that, Kind of guaranteed him that they didn't have to come back and and do combat again. So and then he Smart. then he then he was a, a jump master basically. He didn't jump, but uh, yeah. kick, kick guys out of airplanes in training. Uh, so on a D, uh, C forty seven. So oh, okay, pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I grew up. He was a mechanic, and um, I loved wrenching on cars and watching them and you know losing tools in the yard and you know <laughs> messing up his tool kits which i now have out in my shop and uh and i kind of followed that uh in those footsteps and little did i know how effective and uh, all those skills would come in handy as attack b you know because yeah sure to, you know you had to beg borrow and steal and i was right, used to right. watching dad in the garage and make stuff up and you know i had so many homemade tools in my in my tool bag you know, I just I look at some of the stuff and go, I wonder what this is for. That's probably this <laughs> one car that, you know, that he he needed the, this one single tool to get in and, and, yeah. and rock. So, yeah. So I grew up in Coleman, Wisconsin, about 40 miles north of Green Bay. I did 18 years there. And I just I just knew that I I needed to serve. Like I said, my brother was drafted, but he couldn't go. He was a medical uh, medical failure and he wanted to go. And so. I had five cousins that went and all, they thank God they all made it back and um, some a little traumatized and, yeah. uh, and that'll, that'll happen. That was sure. one of those things. So, but I knew I had to serve and I didn't want to join the army. This is kind of funny. <laughs> all right. <laughs> right. You, you, you know how that goes, right? Yeah. Didn't want to join the army cause I didn't want, you know, I wanted to be with, uh, you know, an, an airman and fly and do right. all that stuff. So, you know, I went in open general and I picked, uh, anything that had to do with an airplane right. and uh, flying usually. And I even picked cop and believe it or not, tech P was not on the list, yeah. which I had no idea and nor did anybody else have any idea what that tech P was anyway. Right, right. But I distinctly remember filling out this preference sheet and it talked about, you know, what, uh, what do you like to do? Uh, outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, right? Sure. So when I'm in basic training and bam, you know, I get this TAC P and I asked the TI, I said, you know, what's this? And he goes, I have no idea. You know, suck it up, have fun. And yeah. you know, my my old man always said, you know, whatever you do, just do it well, you know. Right. And so I said, Okay, giddy up, went to Hurlbert, <laughs> caught some uh snakes while uh while I was cutting grass, you know, waiting for the next class to start. <laughs> and the sergeant comes over and goes, what are you, what are you doing with those snakes? Uh, and I said, well, it's just, you know, kind of catching them and just checking them out, checking them out. And he said, those are, those are rattlesnakes. You kind of want to leave those alone. <laughs> so here's this Wisconsin kid that didn't, you know, we don't have poisonous snakes up here. So, right, right. And uh, yeah, just had a, just had a blast. And uh, you know, you know, I started with a ton of great, great people and names that you would recognize and, you know, our class was pretty amazing and yeah. ended up, I wanted to go jump school. So I was trained to do that. And, uh, I got orders to Germany and I thought, dang, I gotta go to Germany. <laughs> my, that's where my dad's family is from. Oh, okay. And, and my grandfather on my, my mom's dad, he was, uh, drafted in, in, uh, world war two. He was actually a conscientious objector in world war one. He was born in 1892. So World War I comes around and uh, he was an objector. He was a Seventh-day Adventist yeah. and he became a minister, a pastor, uh, and he also was a college professor. So mm -hmm. he, uh, anyway, they found out he did his uh, doctorate on Martin Luther. So he studied in Germany uh, in the late 30s. Okay. So when the army, when the military was looking for people that knew a little bit about that sort of thing, civil mil military operations, you know, they picked grandpa out of the nest and said, Hey, you're, <laughs> you're, you're coming. And wow. he, he, he said, okay, well, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. And he followed Patton's third army and he ended up in Berchtesgaden, you know, where Hitler's home was. He ended up in uh, Munich post-war and he actually picked, selected the leadership of the schools 
and the churches because he knew the clergy. He knew the Nazi sympathizers. He he knew a bunch of that stuff. So yeah, yeah. he had a pretty significant uh, contribution to the post-war start of Germany. And wow. you know that kind of that, even though Berlin was technically the capital, uh, you know Munich was a big big you know hub of the sure. what we knew then as West Germany, but uh, you know obviously a combined Germany now. But so yeah. I, anyway, having said that. I thought I need to go to Germany. So yeah, yeah. I went to Germany. So I did my first two years with the third brigade, third ID and a Berg, Schaffenberg had some awesome bosses there and, uh, and had a blast. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there. So, uh, heavy mech, which was, you yeah. know, not quite as fun <laughs> as, uh, but you know, we made the best of it. We had a great sure. time there, had a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And I remember, uh, back, I think it was a second year they, they, said, Hey, you want to go back to the States You train up for this competition. And back then they called it the two seven five competition. It was, you know, now it's called lightning challenge. And I'm like, yeah, sure. do that. You know, I can <laughs> run and jump and do that sort of stuff. And, and Eric Kibbe and I ended up uh, winning uh, the fourth uh, ASOGs or it wasn't ASOG back then. It was, geez, I don't even know. It was seventh core. Okay. It was seventh core. And I, I, I don't even know the, uh, the debt, the debts now, I, yeah, they've changed ago. so much since then. Yeah, yeah. Changed, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Eric Kibbe and I came back to uh, Herbert Field, Florida, and uh, we won the competition as a, a two and three striper. Nice. Uh, Eric was a senior airman. He PCS'd in route, and um, and that opened up a bunch of doors. I get back to Germany, and they wrote me an achievement medal. Uh, I got to meet the the uh, Seventh Corps commander. I met the uh, Air Force. I forget what numbered Air Force that was now. Uh, but the, the two-star Air Force guy, and uh, it was pretty fascinating because you don't meet many generals, right? Oh, for like, sure. Oh, yeah. Couple, so, um, either one, I mean. And you're like, wow, this is, you know, what do you do? You know, I'm like, Sir <laughs> McClucas reports, you know, and <laughs> salute. Come here. You know, the 7th Corps commander is, come here, Kluke, get over here, you know, come, have a seat, you know, and tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, and he plops down on his couch, and, you know, I'm sitting there all nervous and sweating and and it was awesome. He was yeah. just incredible. And he was, he's, I'm so incredibly proud of you Air Force guys, you know, winning the competition and bringing that trophy back to, to seventh Corps, you know, and, you know, even <laughs> though I was, wasn't in the chain of command, but uh, right. he, he made me feel like, uh, you know, we were part of the part yeah. of the team. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it contrasts that with the Air Force two star. And I, again, I forget their names, but um, yeah, he was all, he was a little bit more, uh, you know, what we would view as a general, right? As, or those oh, expectations. Okay. He just didn't want, he, he didn't, I, I was kind of a burden, you know, more of a burden. Oh, I get you. Was, yeah. Yeah. He can kind of relate. Whereas the air force guy was probably like, what, what, who, who cares? Yeah, what, what about, yeah, what are you doing in here? Get out of my office. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad, but it was, it was something to that effect, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so that was neat. It kind of culminated the, the, the tour there and then um, went to, to Fort Stewart, Georgia. Uh, swamps of Georgia, and it was yeah. uh, it was quite a place. And uh, again, working with the heavy mech, there were f there were two well, actually a division there now. So I went from a pretty small shop with uh, a small number of guys to you know now we're talking you know 40, 50 people at this yeah. uh, squadron. And it wasn't a squadron at the time; it was still a debt. And sure. uh, so we, uh, I, I like to do physical fitness type stuff and. You know, bosses let me run with a PT and there were a lot of people that hated that I'll because bet. they just weren't, they just weren't used to doing that sort of thing. Right. But, you know, that was kind of, it was a shape of things to come, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you didn't know what you didn't know, but I knew that we couldn't, you know, be chubby and, and look good with our army counterparts. And sure. so I, you know, we, we worked hard at that. And, um, I, one day I'm, I'm at the, at the debt and I see these guys with OG 107s and you know, Ranger crushed hats and Ranger tab <laughs> and master blaster parachute wings. And I'm like, damn, who are those guys? And they're like, yeah, they work up at first Ranger battalion up at Hunter. And I'm like, you know, it's J Mac, John McKay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, gosh, dog, who, who uh, I'll think of it here. Uh, uh, Keith Ingram and, um, Tom, oh, Cotter, yeah, yeah. Tom Cotter. Okay. But J Mac was tabbed. Right. And, and mm -hmm. I said, man, that guy's badass looking. <laughs> and I said, I want to be like that. And they said, well, I got to go to jump school. And I said, I'm in. I wanted to go to jump school anyway. So I ended up going to jump school and um, 
you know, get my wings. And I tagged along with them uh, in late 88. And uh, Roger Cross ended up tagging along as well. Right on. And so both of those guys left in pretty close, uh, short order. And both Roger and I ended up rolling up to First Ranger Battalion. And and I, uh, you know, worked with uh, Bravo Company. So J Mac was with uh, Alpha Company, and Roger was with Charlie Company. And uh, so we had three of us, and we had two Alos. We went through several sets of Alos while we were there. But mm-hmm. um, we, w- when I got there, it, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Gary Luck. And okay. uh, not the general luck, as in the Army general luck. But, okay. You know, yeah. Air, but he, he was Air Force guy. He was an awesome dude. He was harder than woodpecker lips. He was a lerp in Vietnam. Wow. And um, when he got out of the Army after Vietnam, he uh, went to school and he became a marine aviator and he is yeah that's so awesome it, it, <laughs> his story is absolutely incredible like i said yeah. I, I work with some of the most amazing humans on the planet and uh and gary he was flying and with the marines and he crashed his airplane crashed and i'm i'm going to goon up the story but to some he broke his back broke a lot of stuff. I think the pilot pa- passed away and he had PTS from Vietnam. He, yeah. you know, now he lost his pilot. Marines say, Hey, you're not going to fly. And so he called up the air force and he told him all this thing. And the air force said, yeah, sure. Come, come fly with us. So That's flew up one eleventh. and <laughs> it, but Gary was intense and, yeah. but, but I loved him. Uh, I loved him like a brother and we had an absolute blast. So I was working with the company and we had done, you know, multiple things with, you know, multiple deployments and, you know, I was fit, I was fitting in the groove real well. And my, my Ranger buddies are like, Hey, when are you going to Ranger school? And I'm like, I, I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work. You know, <laughs> that sounds hard. A lot of suck it up and drive on. But you know, yeah. you know how you're in the, you're, you're just patrolling and you're doing your thing. And I was pretty good at my job as, as a TAC P, you know, calling mm-hmm. in close air support, that sort of thing. But, but I, when we jumped into Panama, you know, when we, we did the Panama mission, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll walk you through why I went to Ranger school post, uh, post Panama. But okay. so we, I'm, we're templated, I'm templated to land on a 90 millimeter recoilless position, right? Cause they had, we had all this G2 before going in and I'm like, sure. oh, you know, geez, it's going to be kind of exciting. And <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the second, second person out of the starboard, starboard door. And, uh, you know, I just never forget, we did sustained airborne training at the Hunter and it was raining, sleeting, snowing. It was just absolute ass weather. It was, it right, was bad. Right. And so we're soaking wet. And some of the companies, I think, you know, one other, one or two of the other companies, they didn't even do a full sustain, but for whatever reason, our <laughs> jump master said, yeah, you're doing full sustain. And, you know, so we're rolling around in the water and it was just freezing. And of course we're miserable. We know we're going down to Panama, right? So, right. It, it, so we, we're not like packed with heavy snivel gear or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> Rangers didn't wear much in the way of snivel gear. No, no. Anyway, and so we right. traveled extremely light. And uh, we, when they crack open those doors, oh my God! I am just <laughs> like, holy crap! This is hot. <laughs> and it was humid and, you know, and, and so we saw some of the fireworks as we're going in and you could see the arcing the light. We had AC 130s prepping and the little birds mm-hmm. were prepping. And, and, uh, so we jump out, out we go. Right. And there's, you know, you see, you see some tracers and we jumped, jumped in at, uh, Turios Takuman. So we had first range battalion and a company from uh, third bat with us okay. at, uh, at T squared. And we jump a little bit too early. So I land outside like two fences and oh, no. and i'm like so i'm i am getting my my gal five out of the m1950 as i'm going going down because i'm i'm ready to rock and pistol on <laughs> right. my side so i'm getting ready to shoot you know so i am literally almost unpacked by the time <laughs> i hit the ground i hit the ground right. and i i find another ranger who you know i was just the first guy out and we're outside these fences so he's got we got to get over these fences so we're helping each other over the fences and i tore my crotch out from oh, about no. from about knee to knee tore the crotch out of my bdus oh no on this fence and i i get down and and on the other side and i'm like and you know we we didn't wear any underwear back then sure 
<laughs> yeah, nothing. Then I didn't, right. I didn't even have underwear packed. <laughs> and I'm going, well, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> and so we're, we're, crawling, oh, no. we're crawling through the grass and we link up with two other rangers. And, and I'm, I'm an NCO. I'm a E5 staff sergeant, right? And yeah. So these spec, spec fours are tabbed and they're going, I, sorry, let's, you know, you, you got it. And I, I'm talking to the AC-130 because I'm making sure that we're, we're good to go. And all of a sudden, we see this duster come up. And I think I shot you the picture. You see that, that uh, red and white duster? It oh, yeah, yeah. Traffic circle. And so you got to wonder why a, a, a vehicle is coming in towards the airfield. Well, yeah. they were allegedly were, were PDF, potential PDF, you know, kind of like guard, National Guard or whatever, but like rental soldiers or whatever. But right. anyway, they... They, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm talking to the AC-130 and the little birds are flying over. So I'm talking to them, making sure, hey, we're good guys here. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and somebody from the talk cleared that AC-130 and unbeknownst to me. And I'm, we're, we're literally 60 yards, maybe 70 yards from this thing. And it, the, the duster stops and the two, two guys get out of it and we're watching them. And we've got a weapons platoon that's on the other side. And I didn't want to get caught in any crossfire. So that's why I was trying to coordinate. And Gary Luck, my boss, uh, he was uh, concussed on the jump. So he was out of sorts. The FSO was out of sorts. And somebody in the battalion talk said, you know, cleared the AC-130 to shoot this duster, which is 50, 60 meters from our position. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we're kind of close to being on the other side of the or right in the way in the line of fire of weapons platoon that was just established in the bp okay and i'm going oh this is not good and they put two 105 rounds down right there in the oh, in the God. weapons platoon blocking position was 15 meters 20 meters oh. away and so so the weapons platoon thinks that they they launched RPGs. Well, the two guys that got out of the vehicle, they were they got stuck. They ran over a parachute, and they they were trying to pull a parachute out from under their car wheel to the tire. Uh-huh. And so weapons platoon opens up, and I'm like, oh crap! So these rounds are flying within you know 10, 15 meters of us. Four Rangers that are just trying oh to get, trying to get into the good guy land. Yeah. And I mean, it all hell, all hell breaks loose. And I'm like, okay. So I'm telling this uh, AC-130, check fire. Kilo zero one, if I remember the call sign, right? Check fire. Hey, we, you got good guys right down here. Don't, don't shoot, don't shoot again. Yeah. Because we're, we're pretty close. And that I believe, so accounts where that RPGs uh, hit some of the BCO weapons guys at that mm-hmm. BP, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you think it's a 105 from that was 105 that was a little yeah. bit of frat so one guy got hit in the butt you know he's laying in the prone and it took a went right past his head and zinged him in the butt and another guy got hit durst i think his name was got hit in the shin and i, I saw him the next day and he he got a back and he got sliced from head to toe just because the infection got got to him pretty quick oh. but anyway we so I put nods on. Finally, we got everybody to cease fire and we're bulldog, bulldog, you know, we're doing the running <laughs> password. And, and I go by and these, these, you could smell, you know, smell the, the death from these guys. And, yeah. um, you know, that rich blood smell was just, just impactful. And so I picked up my PVS fives, right. Cause that's, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's all we had back then. It right. PVS fives. I took a quick gander and I said, okay, those guys are, are done. And we get to the, um, the, the command post and the BCO and we're, we're, you know, settling in. And meanwhile, I've got my junk out <laughs> because uh, I'm torn from knee to knee. But right. the cool thing is, remember, we always had to have sew kits, right? So, yeah, yeah. And we used them. So I oh, yeah. proceeded to sew up my, uh, sew up my crotch, my nice. uh, BDUs uh, while I was in that, in the CP. And interestingly enough, Noriega was just outside of Trios Tucuman, if you look at all the books, but in one of our BPs, uh, he was approached, he pro- approached one of the BPs and, and they asked for clearance to fire and we held fire. Otherwise we could have ended that whole thing a lot quicker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we'd have rolled them up right then and there, but, right. but, uh, just a qu- quick story. Then we ended up uh, assembling and 
we uh, we did some 72 hour reconnaissance missions uh, out in um, out in the hinterlands and just looking for rolling up for PDF. I think it was more for something to do, but sure. in any case, uh, there weren't a ton of opposition. wasn't a ton of opposition at uh, Trios Tacuman, but enough to you know to make your you know you make your hair stand up on the back of your neck when when people are shooting and you see the tracers and everything else. That, you know, it's one of those things where kind of all right gets your attention a little bit. Sure. But uh, a couple of a couple of occasions, I'll tell you that good good stories that we uh, luck major luck uh, Gary Luck brought us into the control tower, and he had landed a, uh, across a couple of bottles of champagne or pallets in the in the terminal, I guess. And so he, he he doesn't tell us this, but we get into this in in the control tower, and that I'm about six two. And this ceiling on this thing was about at five foot, I don't know, five foot eight, five foot nine. So we're in there, we're kind of huddled down and we, <laughs> it's darker than three foot up a bull's hinder in there. And, and we're, we're in there. And so it's me, J Mac and Roger. And, and I think we had Blinky with us too, uh, which was one of the facts we grabbed because we were down in ALO, but we grabbed the fact from, uh, from Shaw and uh, as an A, as a second ALO and Gary, yeah pops the cork you know they're still pop shooting every now and then you know right. going on so you know anytime that you know a gun gunfire erupts you know you can get your attention a little bit sure he pops a cork on that freaking champagne and we about get our pants you know we, <laughs> bam, we hit our heads on the ceiling and, well should, should have been getting down but just absolutely <laughs> hilarious and, and we shared some uh we imbibed in uh on some champagne it was christmas christmas Eve. oh yeah that's right yeah that. and uh it was it was fun so we had a good good time <laughs> in there and another quick story we uh so i was out with uh bravo company on the 72 hour reconnaissance mission and we're getting resupplied so they said hey you know anybody any volunteers go get you know pick get water chow and everything and I'm, well, i'll go you know i gotta put my radio on the back and you know grab the weapon and again it's darker than darker than I'll get out. So we were kind of holed up waiting for a gun Jeep to come with resupply. And all of a sudden we hear something. We're like, somebody, somebody's patrolling up here, you know, PDF probably. So we lay in this hasty ambush position and, you know, we're, we're about three of us or four of us are pointing one way. And then, you know, we're all laying, you know, like logs and the other guys are, you know, laying this way. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> We got the nods, you know, I got my PBS fives on, I'm looking and I'm like, just don't see anything. And that noise is getting closer and closer and closer. And all of a sudden, one of the guys on the end gets stepped on by a Cuda Monday. Oh. <laughs> and then he jumps up and, you know, butt screams like a girl, right? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> so we all are, ah! <laughs> all these hardcore Rangers. I'm like, oh my God, this is absolutely hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> And so we, we proceed to laugh because we're, you know, what do you, what do you do? Yeah, Cuda Monday. You would finally get the nods out. We see him and he's running <laughs> off. And we, I think, I think he, we scared him more than he scared sure. us. But, uh, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. But uh, yeah, so we, we lost one, one uh, ranger on that, on that mission. And sadly he was uh, a victim of friendly fire, which didn't need to happen, but uh, yeah. rest his soul. But uh, we, we, it was a, Great deployment, but what I did learn was I needed to go to ranger school. I needed to know what these guys, I, I, it didn't matter how good I was at my job, I needed to get there. And I just needed to know the, and it's not rocket science, I know that, you know that. <laughs> but I needed to know the, the level of suck and level of everything else. And so ended up going to going to ranger school that, uh, that summer and into the winter, because I was a hard head and uh, over-engineered everything and I was a two-time wow. recycle. Oh, so, no. so while we're there, Desert Shield kicks off. I was in Raider school and I'm like, oh, this sucks. They're going to pull me out, but they need to, right? They're going to pull me out because sure. all of the regiment's going, right? Right. That's what I'm thinking. That's what we're all thinking. And it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And, you know, we're, we're just getting words from the RIs. Of course, you know, we're not watching uh, CNN on couches in Raider school. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> you, you don't get a lot of news, but what news we did get. It, you know, we were like, man, we're gearing up for, for combat operations and they're, they're going to snag us out of here. And I, you know, I'm one of three 
company e-tax. Right. Uh, so they, they got to pull us out, right? It didn't happen, didn't happen. And I had a uh, two-time recycle once in, uh, once I earned, right? It was in mountain phase and I just over-engineered. I, I worked too hard uh, and didn't conserve, right? So when it was my time to lead, I was a shit show. It was oh, just okay. horrible. And I was soup yeah. sandwich and, and it, you know, when you run out of air sp- airspeed and altitude, uh, if you're go, go, go speed racer all the time. I was point guy, you know, cause I was a great navigator, you know, and I yeah. was doing that all the time, Bravo team leader all the time, you know, and finally I'm like, geez, I, I better not do this. And I had a good, good, uh, coach there, uh, who is a f- ex first back guy comes up to me and he said, Hey, Cliff, don't, don't kill yourself, man. And he said, and those hands take care of those hands. He, they're all beat up. You know, I was going yeah. through the brush, like <laughs> crash. And he goes, go through there. Like you're a glass ballerina, man. He said, just be careful, take care of yourself. And then he said, don't over-engineer this stuff. It's not that hard. And so I got coached significantly well and went off, made it through uh, Florida phase. And then out in the desert, had this little Napoleonic guy who hated the Air Force. And I don't know why, but he was a a Grenada Raider too. And um, first bat. And he he said, you're not passing my patrols. And I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. Told me that wow. before before I even had a chance, right? Eh, man. So I had the platoon starting right out of the box, which is no big deal. Um, did pretty well, I thought, but he, you know, he had something to pick. And he says, yeah, you're a no-go. And of course, you know, you need one grid go and waited till the last. So I was a live fire guy, platoon sergeant, last patrol, last opportunity in the barrel. And um, I was kicking ass, taking names, doing everything I could, man. But he, t- he told me, he says, you're not passing my patrols. Oh, that's, and uh, that, you want good on call, you for, for keeping going, but man, that'd be rough. You know, dude, I, I'm telling you, as God is my witness, I, there's no way I could walk out of there, you know, as a quitter. There's no way, you, you sure. know, you can't give up. Right. But, oh man, the temptation on occasion where it was pretty tough to, to not want to kill that guy. Sure. Um, of course, I wasn't in the best shape by that time. You know, you're worn down. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't, care, right. I don't care how big and bad you were before, but you could you could walk your ass off. But to do much more, it was pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, but to hang out and do that, it was an ass kicker. And uh, but I popped my snot bubble, moved out, drew, drew fire, went to another company, and it was a piece of cake. You know, of course, I knew so did everything. he. So you got recycled from desert and you had to do deserts again? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I did mountains yeah. twice because I love the pancakes so much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then did the desert phase, uh, Dugway, Utah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was something. Yeah. So anyway, Dugway had come up later in, uh, in my life, and it was um, a couple of times for sure. But, but it was great. So it was great prep. Um, I felt like I was a very well-trained ranger yeah. as far as earning that tab. I think I earned it a couple of times over, but. You know, it didn't matter. I needed it. And, uh, you know, I needed that, uh, I needed that love from, from my Ranger buddies too, because they, they were, they were as proud of me as, as anything, you know, for sure. sucking it up and driving on. Definitely. And just a short couple of months, of course, we started, you know, that was in December and then January we kicked off, uh, Desert Shield or Desert Storm, I should say, mm. and with the air war anyway. And sure. On, uh, so there we were. Let me think about this. Oh, shoot. I got to go back to Panama real quick. This is a fun okay. story. Real quick, because I'm like, I sure, sure. crossed the, crossed the <laughs> Panama stories. And uh, the day before, or the weekend before, we we're getting ready to go on block leave for the Panama stuff. Before the call up, we got, you know, Bravo notification. I went out. It was a Saturday when we got Bravo. So Friday night, we, I go out with, I don't know what it was. We had a party or something. I got all liquored up and... Next day we were hunting and it was, uh, then captain Kurt Fuller, who later became, you know, general Fuller, just a warrior. He was our mm-hmm. four and shared that first bat. We shared offices oh, okay. and, uh, and Gary luck, major luck. Uh, and we went out hunting down at Fort Stewart. So I didn't have a shotgun. So Gary loaned me one of his shotguns and, and I was hung over and I got up late and, you know, so I didn't, I didn't meet the rendezvous at the time. And so I get into the Fort Stewart hunting office and I, 
I check in and they said, no, nah, you can't. That's full over there where those guys were hunting. And I'm like, dang, man, that sucks. But yeah. I, I knew where the old debt was, you know, 17th or yeah, 15th day of sauce now. Uh, right. I knew that area pretty well and it was open. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I've driven in there before and I kind of know where some of the deer are. And so I get out of my truck and I'm like, oh man, I'm still hungover, feeling like, <laughs> you know, hinder. And I grab the shotgun up, load it up. And I hear this, I'm like, look, I'm a freaking pig. I can shoot those. Bam! I shot a pig and um, threw it in the back of my truck. And I link up <laughs> with, uh, you know, Captain Fuller and Major Luck. And I go, they go, How, Kluke, how'd you do? And I go, pretty good. I shot a shot a pig. They're like, no, you didn't. I said, sure. <laughs> and I show them and we, we're all laughing. And so I call up J-Mac and I said, hey, J-Mac, I've got a pig. What the heck do I do with this thing? I can't. Oh, yeah, bring it to my apartment. He goes, oh, come right. over to. He's got a place right on the river and he has a sh shack and. We, uh, we, I bring it over to his place and we hang it up in a shack. Well, that's Saturday. Well, Saturday afternoon, we get Bravo. I forget oh, what no. exactly what time it was. Probably Saturday, late afternoon, early evening, something like that, if I re recall. We get Bravo. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm wondering what that, what's going to happen with this pig. Well, yeah. I, I had a practice wife at that time. And uh, J Mac's wife, Donna, God rest her soul, um, she, uh, she and my practice wife ended up taking that pig and putting it in the trunk of her Cavalier convertible <laughs> and taking it to a butcher shop. And they, they oh, get okay. to the butcher. This is all while we're down in Panama. Oh, they, take okay. it to the, they take it to the butcher shop. And uh, the guy goes, I can't take it. It's not skinned. So they're like, they're bummed. And they're like, what do we do with this pig now? And so they're in, they stop at a diner. And they're talking about the story. They're laughing and yucking it up. And this guy named Snake says, you got a pig out there? I'll skin that thing for you. Goes out in the parking lot, skins a pig for him. They take it back to the butcher. The butcher takes it and makes sausage out of the whole pig. It's a hilarious story. <laughs> but all these interconnected uh, things happen. And then, uh, so, you know, we, we you know, J-Mac got some, J-Mac and Donna got some good stuff pork sausage out of it and it sure, awesome. sure yeah a great story <laughs> so anyway we uh so there there we are at first bat and i don't know what it was like for you but when i graduated ranger school um i graduated on 11th of december on the fifth we came out of the field and were able to eat some something right and I was probably a just, just to clarify, I never I never earned a tab, so yeah, I didn't yeah. I don't want you to get okay. the yeah, I just want to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah no sweat, no sweat. But um, so I I get out of I get out of the field and we start eating, and I'm about 180 pounds when I when I uh -huh. get out. And but before I go in, I'm about 195 pounds, lean, mean, killing machine, right? And uh, I probably get down to at any given time in the mountains, I was down about 160. 160 pounds. So yeah. lost a little, you lose a little weight. They don't, they don't do that extreme anymore. From what I understand, yeah. they give you a little bit more, more chow, but well, from the fifth till the 25th. So I went on block leave after graduating. And when I stepped on a scale on the 25th of December, 1990, I was 220 pounds. I put wow. 40 pounds on in 20 days. <laughs> My face was. I've swollen. heard that happening though, for sure. Yeah. My face was swollen, and it, it was a horrible time to to go on block leave because I should have been, you know, working out, and I didn't. I just I was on a seafood diet, and everything sticks to you, and blah blah blah. Yeah. So when I get back to battalion, I go for a run, and I literally could run about a hundred yards. I could walk my butt off, but I I couldn't I couldn't run it. So it took a while, and yeah. then on my birthday, February sixteenth, nineteen ninety one. We get, we get, I get Bravo and it's, it is major luck. So Gary calls me up and says, Hey, Bravo notification. And I said, all right. He says, and don't tell anybody besides your, you know, practice wife. And I said, okay, yeah. don't tell, don't tell anybody else. And I'm like, uh Oh, this is not huh. good. So <laughs> I get in the shop and it's just Gary and me. And I'm like, where's the rest of the, where's J Mac and Roger. And they're, they're not going. It's just you and me. We're taking one company and that's it. We're going to, we're going to desert shield or desert storm. Yeah. Like I'm like, 
Whoa. So we, we <laughs> take, like won the lottery. We, oh yeah. I was like, win a lot. I, I felt bad though. I'm not going to lie. Sure. I, you know, you don't, you don't want to re- leave your, your air force bros behind for sure. But you know what? An opportunity like that can't, can't pass. So we pack up all the gear and we, we leave and we literally were, when he bravos me, we hit that night. We had the, Oh, we had the Ranger ball. Oh, okay. So we go to the Ranger ball. It was a whole battalion. Right. So, and I can't, we can't tell anybody anything. So the next day we're (laughs) leaving and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is going to be tough. So my Bravo company buddies are coming up going, Hey man. So, uh, so what you doing tomorrow? (laughs) And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, probably about the same thing you might be doing. And they're like, Oh, cool. That's great. That should be fun. Yeah. So we're talking in code, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it just sucked that we couldn't say anything to yeah. it was horrible for Roger and J Mac, man. And, and then off we went. And, um, so we get to this little tiny spot and we were basically doing some security stuff for, um, you know, for other, other mission, CJ mm-hmm. Sodaf mission there. Uh, but we uh, ended up, uh, we had missions planned out the yin yang. And yeah. so, so, and it's just Gary and myself. And so Gary goes, you go on the first one and then I'll go on a second one and we'll just, get, we'll rotate. So that way we're not, you know, we're not spending burn yourselves burn, out. Yeah, yeah. Burn, burn ourselves out. So, so I go on the first one and it was a bent, we called it the bent tower mission because uh, we went in and destroyed this communication site. Uh, they, they were linking up and, you know, CJ sort of at that time in that particular area, w- they were taking out the scuds. You know, and uh, okay. the scuds that were launching uh, were able to reach uh, Israel uh, f- oh, okay. for the most part. So they, as soon as they put that CJ Sodaf in there, they they kind of stopped launching the scuds because they were you know running scared and <laughs> yeah. w- the ones that didn't get you know killed or captured. So we did the bent tower mission and um, pulled back, and then you know as as you know the ground mission, and it was the same day the ground mission started and. Band. it was over just like yeah. that so gary didn't get, get a chance to get out <laughs> oh but, no yeah but, man so, you really yeah, lucked out the whole way didn't I, you I tell, i'm telling you man I felt, <laughs> I felt just like the luckiest guy on the planet man just total total awesomeness bad news is we uh we crashed a helicopter there and you know wiped out a you know a, a good group of humans and uh warriors oh, so but in any case uh that you know, I felt pretty fortunate. So I got a chance to do combat ops with first bat two times. Yeah, and, right. And then uh, I think because I had the tab, it was a pretty easy choice, not an easy choice, but because the Air Force assignment system doesn't work all that smoothly, but I got picked to go to the regiment. So I'm going to be the, the boss there. And again, worked with some of the greatest humans on the planet. And one of my, my best bros, uh, Brian Daly, uh, I got to do yeah. a shout out for him that, uh, anyway, we worked together and I, you know, I told myself, I went through a couple of leadership schools and they're like, you know, you, you know, try to be a good boss and all that other stuff. And, and I was trying to be that, that good boss. And I just, you know, I got to keep everybody at arm's length. And sure. when I find out BD's from Wisconsin, you know, he loves the Packers, you know, and I'm, I'm from, and then he's a wrestler, I'm a wrestler and we're uh-huh. both tabbed out and we're like, Oh man, this <laughs> this is hard to keep away from this guy, but I, and so we did trips together. We did, we rode motorcycles together. We did all kinds of crazy stuff together. And, and, um, he had a daughter, um, Lauren and Lauren had come and visit and they'd stay out at Uchi Creek at the, at the campground there at Fort Benning and which now is whatever it is, but Fort Benning, we'll call it Fort Benning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it was, it was awesome. And uh, we'll fast forward here just a little bit. Well, actually a lot of that. And, uh, I told you, I went to a couple of reunions with my, my old man, you know, bomb mm-hmm. group reunions. Well, when I graduated the military back in 2014, I had no idea, no idea I was going to do 20 years or 30 years. Are you kidding me? Right. I'm not going to be one of those lifer guys. No way. <laughs> right. It's just not going to be, yeah. you, know, you get your foot caught in the fun wheel. This is all about being around awesome humans and just yeah. loving what you do. You know, you, you, you get these opportunities and you know, I, I raised my hand for just about everything. Raise sure. your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. And some of them were crap. You know, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You, you know, you raise your hand and you go, Oh shoot. I, 
maybe I shouldn't have signed up for that, <laughs> right. but you just do it. Right. Because when mm. you're, when you're embracing the suck and you're with all your bros that are doing the same sucky thing, it, it makes you stronger, better, faster. And, and, oh, by the way, we're on this planet, uh, to make stories and right. we tell them to, but we also make them. So sure. when we're together, we're going to make some damn stories. And there's, yeah. there's a, there's a really good chance of that. So anyway, I, so we're fast forward from Fort Benning. So Lauren, I saw her a couple of times, didn't really know her that well, but BD asked to, to do something else. He, he asked me and I said, what do you want to do? Cause you know, maybe I can help. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. And he goes, I'd like to go out and be a free fall instructor. And I said, that is pretty cool. Are you sure you want to do that? And he said, yep, I want to do that. And I said, I, I'll make a phone call. I, I got a bro out there, Doug Tillman. He's a warrior and he, he knows how to get stuff done. And I, if you really want to do that, he, he's a guy, he'll, he's a hiring authority. So I call up Doug and I said, Hey Doug, I got a superhero here, man. He's a stud guy's freaking awesome. Jump with him many times. He's a skilled, skilled Jose. And uh, Doug hires him up and man, I sucked losing my, my bro. You know, he goes out yeah. to free fall school, but he, he loves it. And we all know what happened. He, he had that double malfunction and, and ended up dying on the drop zone. Yeah. So uh, we go to Wisconsin, Reedsburg for his funeral. And we had motorcycle bros there. We had military bros there. We had all kinds of brothers there. That was freaking awesome celebration of life. Yeah. And we're, we drink till the cows come home and you could, you couldn't buy a drink, you know, in sure. the town and we whooped it up big time. Of course we had to pay the man the next day because right. there, there we are. I am hung over and I've got a corner of that flag as we're lowering BD into the ground. And I am cussing him going, you son of a biscuit, <laughs> you know, why, why couldn't we be celebrating, you know, something else other than, right, right. Other than your death. But, um, so that's the last time I saw Lauren. Fast forward years, you know, it was back in 2019, I think, uh, J-Mac, another, you know, you know, hear these names pop up and mm -hmm. another one of my heroes, he calls me up and goes, Hey man, there's a TAC P reunion. And I hadn't done anything really military since 2014. Right. I did in 2015, I was asked to go to Korea to speak at a maintenance group. Uh, one of the maintenance group commanders in, in a, as a command chief, he, he and I hit it off. He's a great guy. And he calls me up and goes, Hey, can you come over and, you know, be a guest speaker at a combat dining out? And I went, hell yes. Combat <laughs> dining out. Gotta love that. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, um, that's about the only thing I did. So, so yeah. but J Mac asked me and he goes, Hey, let's it's up at Fort Lewis, Washington. Let's do this. I said, all right, let's do it. So I was a little nervous cause you know, I don't feel any relevancy. You know what I mean? Because you know, I'm out of touch, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you start seeing your old bros and you're like, oh, man, this is pretty cool. And I yeah. hearken back to my dad, you know, seeing his old bros and sharing stories because, you know, as we age, those stories change. Right. You know, and right. It, it, it's just the way the brain works. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear someone has a different view of a story, <laughs> uh -huh. you go, wow that that's a different view and, and not that they're right or you're wrong or you're right or and they're wrong it's just different and sure. you add value to that story and you go <laughs> oh okay i kind of forgot about that so anyway we're out there we're talking and blah 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 and this girl walks by and you know somebody pokes me so you know who that is right i go i have no idea that's bd's daughter lauren and i go what so here i am wow. this warrior you know been retired now you know doing school bus operations blah 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 and i'm looking i'm going how how do i do this how do i how do i keep my emotions in check and you know all these things are running through my head and i but no stranger to danger right yeah i, I jump in i wade into that alligator swamp and i go hi lauren i'm marty klukas i i knew your dad bd and she looks at me and She's like, really? Well, well, tell me, tell me a little bit. You know, we start talking and oh, I am like, oh my gosh. And I, I'm looking at her and I'm, and I'm like looking into BD. I swear yeah. to God, I look and I stop and I, I, I step back and I go, I said, Lauren, has anybody ever told you, you got BD's eyes? She goes, <laughs> oh no, you know, I no, you know, and I'm like, 
uh, it was everything I could do to just keep from bawling, right? Sure, you know? sure. And I'm, I'm just, but we're having such a great conversation. I'm telling her, you know, stories. And I, told, I prefaced everything. I said, Lauren, I, there was a few stories. I just can't get there from here. <laughs> right. but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. You don't need that. to know these. Yeah. You don't need to know everything. <laughs> but but here's a, the genesis behind everything. And we had a freaking blast. And we had so much fun. It took a plastic surgeon and all our, the smiles from our faces. We did sure. so many cool trips and had so much fun. And anyway, I'm looking at it. And I just, and I just go, man, you have BD's eyes. And, and it was just, a, it was a connection like no other. And I, and I reflected on that and I said, you know what? This is why we do reunions. This is why we get back together. And, you know, it's, it's one thing doing like this call where you're, you know, you and I get a chance to see each other. And that's pretty cool because, you know, just, just the old phone call is nice, but you can't For see sure. the emotion. You can't see the, the body language and, and that unspoken right. stuff is pretty powerful. Anyway, um, and then fast forward. We, you know, so Lauren and I exchanged, you know, notes and everything else. This is probably the coolest part of, you know, life is, you know, I don't have any children. And so it's almost like having, having a daughter, right? So yeah, taking yeah. over for BD. And so she, she texts me one day and she goes, Hey, are you free for a phone call? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. She goes, well, how about tonight around five o'clock? I was all right. So we're over at my cousin Carl's place and uh, we're whooping it up because that's what we do in Wisconsin. You know, you get together, <laughs> crack some JD and, uh, <laughs> right, right. and pour it over some mice and get her done. Right. And so <laughs> she calls and I, Hey, how you doing, Lauren? She goes, Hey, Marty, I really wanted to do this face to face, but I wasn't sure if you'd be able to, you know, make the next whatever, you know, get together. And I said, all right, yeah, no worries. She goes, I haven't seen this guy, Austin, and um, we're getting married and, I, I want you to walk me down the aisle. So oh like, my gosh. Eh. So I'm on the phone and I, I, I can't say a word. Yeah. <laughs> so oh like, my goodness. Uh, you, you know, talk about out of the blue, out of the just crazy. Who, who does this? Who, you know, that was the last thing. On what an life. honor though, that, man. Oh, oh man. God, yeah. So, so I, 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 I kind of uttered some words to the effect of, um, <laughs> my not talking doesn't constitute a no. I just want to let you know that right. it's just that I can't even get my brain around this to say yes, of course. And of course <laughs> it came out and I said, you know, I'll, I'll do anything you need me to do. And sure. so, so Peggy and I went down there, we just had a freaking blast and, you know, TAC P brothers came and represented and, and nice. it was just the coolest thing. And, you know, I can feel the, the I, I know it's kind of cheesy or whatever you want uh. to call it, but, Man, I, I could feel his presence there. For sure. It was yeah, it, for sure. It was just badass. It was cool. Oh yeah. man, that's awesome. So that she had awesome. a great great time, and um, and then she got a baby come on the way. So so almost you're like a, a grandpa. Like almost yeah, exactly. You're right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so back to back to Fort Benning, and oh my god, we had so much fun there, and um, all the all the brothers there were just amazing, and had a had this little, you know, you, you make a name, I guess. And sometimes that name becomes the, a little bit bigger than the human. Right. Cause sometimes, you know, and I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've run across some dudes that were like, man, you, you have, and they tell me stories about me that we're not, they're not true. Oh, I, yeah. I go, Dude, I don't know where you got that story from. That isn't <laughs> even close to what happened or <laughs> I wasn't even there or All whatever right. the case may be. And, and anyway, um, I get a phone call. And it was a former group commander, and he it was uh, Colonel Modica, later I think General Brigadier General Modica. He goes, "Hey Marty, uh, get out of stew." And I go, "All right." So I'm in the RHQ, and and he goes, "I need you to get on a C21. I need you to pick three other guys, and I need you to go down to Key West, Florida." And I'm like, "Wow, this sounds pretty cool." Yeah. I said, "What? What else? You know, what other details?" And he goes, "Well." Um, remember that shoot down of the O2 back brothers to the rescue back a year ago? Well, they're doing an anniversary float and you're going to be on coast guard cutters and you're going to call in close air support. If the Cubans come, you know, fight. Oh, now, for, oh I thought you meant like in a kind of, oh, this is for real. This is like, this is for real. Oh, okay. Wow. wow. Yeah, Crazy. So like, oh my God. So I pick up the phone and I go, I call, I had to call my boss, right? Jerry Valentini. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He was a great American, and definitely uh, we had a little bit too much fun together. And I, 
That, that, that's <laughs> one. That, the, 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 there's a couple stories you can't tell. Right, and if right. you did, and if you did tell, no one would believe. Yeah, I yeah. God, nobody had believed. But anyway, <laughs> so I call up Jared. I go, "Hey, Jared, Bravo notification," and he's like, "What?" I said, "Bravo, <laughs> no talkie, Bravo." And so, and then I called a, a former boss of mine, my first boss in the Air Force, Kyle Hurst. Okay. And an ALO, Tom Fritz, and I said, "Hey, guys, come on in." So they're like, "What up, Buttercup?" <laughs> and I and I already briefed the regimental commander. So I went down to the regimental com- commander and I said, "Hey, sir, uh, C twenty one's coming to pick uh, myself and three other guys up. We're, we're going to leave you light for just a little bit, but this shouldn't take long. Here's what's going on." And he he was a little reluctant, but he was supportive because again, Colonel Motica had called him and greased the skids a little bit, and oh, okay, he, yeah. he, was, he was pretty he was pretty comfortable with it. So we haul off to Lost Army Airfield. Here comes C-21, scoops us up. We get down there and, you know, and Jerry Valentini's new to the sport, right? Yeah. You know, I've been around for a couple of years and, uh, and we go to brief the Navy Admiral that's in charge of this task force. And he is as nervous as can be. And he just, he's like, hey, what are you guys doing? And so Jerry, Colonel Valentini starts talking, you know, uh, and I just look over at him and I go, all right, sir, what the good colonel's trying to tell you is here's <laughs> what we're going to do for you. We're going to have two teams. We're going to be right there on the helm with your uh, vessel commanders. And we're going to call in close air support. We have F-16s flying air cap for, for us. And, and we'll be calling close air support when, uh, when you need it. Any questions? And he's like, nope, that's good enough for me. And out, nice. off we went. <laughs> so we jump on two Coast Guard cutters and off we go. And what a freaking blast. You know, oh, my God. I'm, I'm an E7 so at that time. So I get to eat in the, the, the chief's Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's right. That's right. That. Yeah. And so we're up, we're up there at the helm. You know, we got their shirts off, sun's out, guns out, you know, doing a little <laughs> float. Well, good news is ch- there were super choppy seas. Good news, bad, yeah. bad news story. So we do radio checks with the F-16s flying. And, and you know, it's one of those operations that nobody – would ever hear about or know about or whatever. So we're out there, you know, lapping up the sun, just sitting there, you know, hanging out with the coast guard cutter and the Navy commanders that are on there. And, uh, it it was, it was awesome. And we didn't, (laughs) we didn't, they didn't meet their target because the seas were too rough. So the flotilla was going to go out there, but we did have, uh, Cuban aircraft scrambled and we had Cuban boats that were on the, just over the horizon. We see them all painted them all on radar and everything else. And so it was pretty, it got a little, I mean, it wasn't hairy by any stretch of the imagination. It could have been though, for sure. Oh yeah. The, the Coast yeah. Guard guys were a little nervous and you know, I was like, Shh, I'm going to. Meanwhile, go. you guys are out there with your shirts off. <laughs> like, this is how you do it again. Calm yeah. down guys. Yeah. It's a, this is easy day, man. <laughs> we got a lot of firepower at our, at our hands. So it was, oh, yeah. that was awesome. So yeah, it was neat. And, uh, and there, there I was doing, doing all kinds of who stuff and, Loving it, not not really caring where I was going to go next. I was on an airfield seizure. We were doing a, uh, it wasn't a bilat. It was probably one of the um, multi lats. And a combat control commander comes walking by. He's like, "Hey, Kloop, you're coming to the two four. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> First of all, you know, I I recognize you because we've done multi lats. I recognize yeah, yeah. you, but I I'm like. He goes, well, I, I'm just making it happen. You're, you're coming to two four. And I said, Oh, okay. All right. Whatever. <laughs> I get orders to two four SDS. And I'm like, Hmm, well, I'm a tech P. I wonder if they know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a two seven five. Well, now it's one Charlie four. Juliet one Charlie four seven level. And yeah. No, well, they, yeah, they, I'm going to the two four. No mistake. Yeah. They, no mistake they know there. And so in, well, and you're in, in there, they knew who you were. I mean, we all knew who you were. So you, they were like, this is the guy. If, See, but that, that you, you're the guy. I'm going to tell you though, that the thoughts never crossed my mind. Sure. You I'm know, sure it didn't. That, that just, it, it's beyond imagination that, you know, somebody would come up out of the blue and go, Hey, boom, boom. So I got the, I got a chance to, you know, I was in the fire shop and I did a lot of training with, mm-hmm. um, with those guys and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the faces and the impact and 
you know, I'll give you one little story. Uh, PJ uh, lives right down the road. In fact, I got together with him uh, a couple of weeks back, a month, month or so ago, Butch McCumber. I use a tagline that he gave and he didn't even realize this. He, he, he would say every day is a bonus. Now the guy's on fire all the time and he's got one of those personalities and he's a nine lives guy, mm -hmm. you know, cat that has nine lives, except he's probably got a 99 lives. Right. right. And, um, his stories are phenomenal and he's a, he's a storyteller, story writer, the whole shooting match. Well, anyway, every day is a bonus that stuck with me. And I say that probably 50, if not a hundred times a day. Yeah. And so then my team, any, anybody that's around every day is a bonus. Every day is a bonus. <laughs> and you go, even when it's crappy, you know, you, yeah. Hey, we got vertical today. Every day is a bonus, you know, and you just, and you think about some of those people that didn't wake up. And some of them are our brothers and sisters that didn't get there from here. So truly is every day is a bonus. Um, so I had the opportunity to serve with some, some well-known warriors and John Chapman was one of those guys and Chappie. I'll never forget what a guy with high standards, man. Yeah. You couldn't slack around those guys. You know, when they, they wanted the best right. and they demanded the, it, the best. So when we did training, we, we did it the best. And, um, and Chappie was one of those guys that, that brought it. He lived right down the road from me. Uh, and it was, uh, it, we lived out in Rayford and just, just a great, great American and, um, and impactful. I kind of left there because I got promoted, you know, they were yeah. so good to me. They, they got me promoted. So I was way behind on my school, I was way behind on, you know, all the things that I should have done that Roger, yeah. Roger Cross said, you know, you need to get done. <laughs> so, but I finally did it and I, and I got promoted and, um, Mark Valella again, he, he nursed me along too and pushed, pushed me hard to get promoted because I, I wanted to serve in those levels. We, mm -hmm. we all wanted to work for somebody that gave a shit. And I think, uh, I think when you, see that when people care, you, you want to, you want to bust your butt for them. So what I wanted to do is just have great people around and, and then help, help them, right. help them, help themselves. And, and by you helping them, it lifts you up. And that's how that stuff happens is you take care of your bros and sisters and man, you just get lifted up and lifted up and lifted up. And, uh, and, and then I got, so I was like going to the 14th, ASOS. I'm like, that's cool gig. Jump. Yeah. I'll maintain jump status. And I'm like, this is cool. So Mark, I was replacing the irre irreplaceable, unreplaceable Mark Valella, right? right, right. Hard to follow in his footsteps, sure. right? Nobody wants to follow that guy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so Mark calls me up and we're like, you know, I'm inside the fence and I, you know, we don't have any windows in our building, but if we had, I could look right out the window and see him and we could probably almost hand coffee to one another All right, he calls right. me up and he goes hey marty he says i didn't even get you on a gains roster and i already have you on a loss roster and i went what what what, what are you talking about that doesn't make any sense he goes yeah yeah you you didn't even show up as a gain to the 14th day sauce but you're already a loss to the four and i'm still at the two four yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh, this is interesting so um I go to, I'm going to the fourth air support operations squadron. I'm like, Ooh, oof, da. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> what am I doing? At the, I'm not an ASOC guy. Yeah. And you know what? I, it, that, there was a little bit of pride there. And I just went, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Suck it up. Buttercup. Sure. I'm a tab guy, you know, in the highlight of my career, little did I, I mean, I realized that later that is a setup. Right. That's a setup mm. to do bigger, better, faster, stronger things. You need, sure. you should know all that stuff. You can't be a company ETAC or company JTAC your whole life. Right. 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 I mean, that, that's fun. <laughs> that's great. It's super fun. Yeah. But it's not going to get you anywhere. But if you, well, if, if you want to lead at those diff, different levels, you, you need that exposure and experience across the TAC P spectrum. Right. And, and ASOC, right. man, I tell you, of course, I leave in two, late 2000. And uh, November of 2000, and get to the ASOC, and we start trimming up the ASOC and doing all that stuff, and and then it was 9/11, right? right? So 2000, 
uh, to, yeah, 2001. So that was September 11, 2001. So I'm there for just under a year and uh, boom. And I'm like, okay, we're, we're in the ASOC. And so we're really trimming now and getting ready for combat operations somewhere probably, right? Yep. Just, just wondering about it. Mm-hmm. And in December, um, I get a call, another one of those hand selected guys <laughs> call and going, Hey, Marty, we need you. And, uh, you and Mark Lutz, we need you at the Kayak at PSAP. And it was LA. Oh, okay. And, and so LA, they had been running the air campaign and ground operations, obviously putting airplanes over the head of the soft forces. Uh, and they need somebody at the Kayak that understood you know, special operations and had, we both had clearances, those TS clearances. And so we worked in the special operation liaison element at the, huh. at the chaos from late December through Anaconda, through everything. And I remember, you know, listening to LA stories and everything else. And, uh, you know, I, it, it kind of brought back some memories and I just, I remember listening, you know, in on, uh, because it, in the chaos, we had, uh, we had the soul, desk and then we had uh, compartmented sections that mm-hmm. not not obviously not everybody was able to get into but but watching some of the the footage of the operations and uh through the pred uh, predator feeds and such and it was just just an amazing uh, uh it was an amazing experience and again working with some some great americans and and rubbing shoulders with some people that would, you know, you, you don't know why you're in the room with this person. And then all of a sudden everything happens for a reason down the road, yeah. you end up linking up with that person in a different life in a different way and going, Oh, wow. We know each other. This is, fa- <laughs> this is fantastic. This is unbelievable. <laughs> and, uh, all those little connections and all those little things and, you know, not knowing it, the, the, the people that I worked with that, and then down the road, you know, coming in contact with them again. And it's all, all instant credibility. It's all this sure. like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. We don't have to sniff our hinders. We don't have to do any of that <laughs> right. stuff. We've, we know each other and it's yeah, yeah. just fascinating. So, so we did that. So Mark and I, uh, led the soul desk for, uh, for about three and three months and some change and got a chance to go down range, which was fantastic. I probably should have let Mark go. But I had Mark stay behind, <laughs> and I I went in downrange and did some Kandahar and went up to K two and a couple of different other places, and that was in uh, you know January February time frame. Mm-hmm. And then you know so I was with the CFAC you know right there briefing them just about every other day and doing all that stuff and and then you you get to know you know General Mosley and and then uh-huh. later later Buck Buchanan. Um, and, uh, general Buchanan, obviously I wouldn't call him Buck, but, uh, you know, you just in down the road, you, you link up with these guys and they just, they just know who you are and it opens sure. up other opportunities, other doors, everything else. So fast forward. OI, OIF. So there we are uh, on an airplane going to brief the CFAC about, you know, V core operations and I'm at the ASOC and. So we go go back, brief them air, air ground operations. We brief them on the CFAC on the you know potential ground scheme and maneuver, and and then off to Kuwait we go, and uh, out in Camp Virginia and get get prepped up, and bam, you know they cross CLD, and of course the ASOC we stay in the we stay in the rear. That's mm-hmm. and it it hurt, you know. I wanted to uh, be I wanted to be with the leap or, or not the leap, but the mini. Cause we, we actually leapt, leapt up to, uh, to, uh, Baghdad later on, you know, once third ID secured it and I was, I was on that, but I wanted to be the, in the driver and I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. man. And the boss, <laughs> you know, the bosses were, you know, Colonel, uh, Colonel Bain, uh, uh, Colonel Magoo, McGee, those guys were like, no, you're staying back here. We, uh, we, we need your expertise back here. So I'm like, all right. Okay, let's do this. So, <laughs> anyway, putting airplanes in and listening to listening to those guys, feeling feeling it. You know, mm-hmm. I could feel. You know, I lived their life through the radio every single day. You know, and it, right. 
thank goodness it wasn't too many days because there was a few days early on where I it was like rain, it was worse than ranger school. You know, it's like almost hallucinating and because uh, I couldn't get sleep, I'd go go rack out for a couple hours and I just couldn't my mind couldn't unplug and yeah ended up one one of the nights I just I picked up a magazine. I read the first line of the magazine. It popped popped my brain out of gear and I slept the entire, uh. you know, probably six, six hours, which is phenomenal. And, uh, put, got my mind right again and back sure. into the fight and, uh, to, to better help. But yeah, it was amazing, amazing time. And, and, uh, I listened to one of the casts where LA was talking about the, the decorations and, and such from, from OIF, OEF. And, and then, you know, fast forward, I had orders cause I got, selected for chief master sergeant to the 18th ASOC, which man, what, what Perfect. it doesn't get, yeah. any better, doesn't get any better, better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a Pentagon guy, not doing that. <laughs> right, so right. the best job in our career field, right. is the 18th ASOC. I'm like, at the, certainly at the time. So I got right. orders and I, so we're up in Baghdad and we're doing the stuff and it went from a hundred miles an hour down to zero about. And I'll never forget, this is, again, humble, but th that's, how, that's how we roll, right? Mm -hmm. Sergeant Major comes in, and it wasn't the 5th Corps Sergeant Major, it was the uh, Ops Sergeant Major. Comes in, he goes, hey, Air Force. I go, yes, Sergeant Major. So I need, I need somebody, I need one of your guys to uh, burn, burn uh, feces. And I'm like, you need a shit burner? I said, I, uh, my guys are busy. I mean, yeah. my guys are tied up. I mean, and this was still when it was still about 95 miles an hour. It was quite 100 miles an hour. But, and I look around and I'm like, well, I'm the most dispensable person right now. And he goes, I'm not taking you. And I said, Sergeant Major, you're going to take me or you're not going to get an Air Force guy. Huh. I mean, you, I, I'm your Huckleberry. All right. And he goes, well, all right, if you insist. So I went out there and I burned dung, <laughs> human dung. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, a, if you've never burned it, you pour the diesel fuel on there and get it on fire and you stir that stuff. If you've never done that, don't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done it, to be honest. I don't, I don't think I ever have. Yeah, that's a special kind of something there. And oh. uh, But anyway, you know, again. But that speaks volumes about you and the kind of person you are, that you, you're like, look, I'm not going to make my guys who are actually, they're busy they're guys. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're not. That's we a testament to you, man. We, we didn't have two to make one. You know what I mean? And, and sure. so everybody was needed. And I was the least, I, frankly, I, but the stuff was running the show by itself. The, we, we had amazing, amazing humans. And yeah. these guys, we had been training like, like crazy. And these guys could do it in their sleep. These right. young two stripers and three stripers on the Air Force uh, Air Request Net just humping it and getting it done. And I, yeah. I'm so proud of those guys. Nate English is just one of those sleeper guys that smarter than everybody else in the room. Um, yeah. and, and you, all you do have to do is watch him and, and guard him and protect him and make sure he doesn't hurt himself. Cause he tried to do that <laughs> a couple of times, but not, not like hurt himself, hurt himself, but yeah, doing a little bit, work, him, work himself too hard. Probably. Yeah. Well, I'm doing dumb stuff too, but oh, so, okay. you <laughs> so you cover for those guys, uh, <laughs> right. and, and protect them because you know, they're going to, they're going to do great things down the road for sure. not only you, but for, for the community. So, but it was awesome. And so went to the 18th day saga and I'm like, all right, I'm King freaking Kong. This is awesome. <laughs> I get to work with guys like, you know, Spike Gentile. Oh my gosh. Colonel Gentile was just a beast. Yeah. He didn't pick me, but, and I didn't pick him, but you know, he's one of those guys that you just would do anything for. Right. Um, just like many of our the warriors that you hung out with and I hung out with, you just, you know, great, great, great Americans. Sure. I, a couple of mentions I didn't I didn't mention Bruce Voigt man he was he was one of those unsung heroes too that For sure. one of my bosses that I later became one of his bosses but <laughs> you know it was it was awesome though because he he just he's a no BS guy and yeah. um, he he showed me a, a way to lead um, a tech different techniques that were incredible and um, yeah so I had some amazing amazing bosses that did some amazing things and then. And there I am at the 18th going, man, this is King Kong. Awesome. Going around, <laughs> visiting our warriors, sending folks down range, knowing how that whole process works, understanding everything, um, or most things anyway. And in the highlight, 
in walks this guy. Tall guy, recognize him. We briefed him. He was uh, a J, one of the JSOC uh, Air Component Commanders. And uh, Mike Keltz, Colonel Keltz, he walks in through the door and he goes, Hey, Kloop, I need a chief. And I said, oh, you're looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been here for, uh, I'm in my tap dance. And then I, Colonel Gentile was out and um, I think he was out to lunch and I was just breaking bread. You know, I usually brought my lunch in yeah. and chowing ops. And, and uh, he's like, no, nah, I need a command chief. And I'm like, oof, I got put on that list. And I had to, vo- I mean, I had to volunteer because Spike kind of almost put a gun to my head and said, you need to do this. And I said, I, I'm not the Huckleberry. I'm not that guy. I, mm-hmm. you're, you're, yeah. It's wrong, wrong guy. But anyway, he, he convinced me to do it. And I said, ah, and I made the list and I thought everybody made the list. And so in walks Colonel Kelts and he said, Hey, I need, I need you. And I said, Oh man, I, sir, I don't know anything about the air force. I know more about the army <laughs> than I know about the air force. And I, yeah, I don't even know the first thing about command chief operations he's like well i kind of got to figure it out because i'm taking you you know all right i and then in walks spike gentile and he goes you're taking my chief and i went oh my god this sucks (laughs) and uh so he he just buttered me up though he said all the right things i i need a a warrior airman that understands battle understands being in the under the gun and being, you know, because my C-130 crews are going in and flying into combat, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, you just, you just hit those sensitive buttons that say, okay, yeah, right, yeah. I'm in, I'm in, I'm your Huckleberry. Let's do it. So off I go. And again, I'm, I'm faking it. I'll fake it till I make it. <laughs> you know, I just, I'll just do what I do and, yeah. and lift up those war- warriors and, and every year I'm in a warrior. Right. And, and I just, every day's a bonus and every year I'm in a warrior, man, you're, you're in this place. And some people, oh, man, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do this, but you know, I'm an aircraft maintainer. I'd rather be out on the front lines. Hey, dude, we, we need you doing that airplane stuff. I mean, that, right. you're critical. You link, your link to this whole process is such a big deal so that bombs can get on, you know, warheads on foreheads down range right. and just painting that picture and, and connecting the dots for them. You know, and that's kind of all I did. And then just protect them, look out for them and, um, and make sure they're rewarded justly. And uh, yeah, so I was thinking I'm going to go now. Where am I going to go past this? Because it's a one year assignment and I, yeah. And th- things happen and all of a sudden I'm going to Hill Air Force Base and, as a command chief. I'm like, okay. oh, this is this is a real deal. I could fake it in an, a deployed environment, yeah, yeah. but now I'm going to be. Now I'm going to be in a area where on an air force base, which I spent very, very, very little time at, you know, at Pope air force base, I was really on Fort Bragg. Sure. And I don't have any other time on a air base other than TDY, which was right. fun. And there were lots of us and it was fun there, but th- that's, uh, that's yeah. That's the extent of it. Yeah. That's yeah. the extent of it. So I get the hill and, uh, man, it was just cool. So cool. Surf Bellatech, Colonel Bellatech, wing commander goes chief. Let's go. We're going up in an F-16. I'm like, sir, I, I heard he had some discs in my back and my neck just a couple months back. I, I don't know. If, he goes, we'll run you to the flight dock because I had the HAP card, you know, high altitude parachute, sure, sure. you know, so no yeah. big deal. Didn't have to do chamber. I had chamber calls, all that other stuff. And so I could go out on a fam flight, not a, you know, incentive flight. And right, right. Um, so the, I, I go to the surgeon he goes, man, the commander really wants you to fly on. I go, he says, do you have any questions? I said, I just had some herniated deaths and stuff. And I'm just a little concerned about that. And he goes, well, make sure you tell the boss not to eject. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> good, I, said, good okay. call. <laughs> I said, Colonel Beltec, all you have to do is we have to fly and we just can't eject. And uh, <laughs> so off we go. He takes off out of Hill Air. We take off out of Hill Air Force Base. He's like, all right, chief, jet's yours. I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> this, is, this is cool so we fly to the and now i can't tell you how many times i've been on the uttr right on the ground uh, right right yep one is for ranger school two times two freaking sessions two classes oh, that's right that's right yeah so we we fly to michael army airfield to fly over and I'm, i point out 
all the stuff. I've been to Wig Mountain. I've been to, you know, all the different, you know, live fire, drive fire, all this other stuff. And, and I am just, he goes, man, chief, you know, this range better than I do. And I would say, well, I, I should, I spent a <laughs> lot of time boots on the ground out here, no doubt. but it was fascinating. He, he let me fly the whole time. He managed the power because it doesn't take much to get that thing up uh, past the uh, boom booms and you don't want that. So sure. we, uh, and then he took over and he just, he flew the wings off that thing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, what a hoot. And I got three <laughs> other opportunities to fly. I flew with the vice wing commander during an ORI. It was either an ORE or ORI. Did a, a day sortie, close host port. And then nice. did, flipped it, turned it and did a night uh, sortie with him. And it was just phenomenal. And then Finney flight with the boss again. Because the boss got me hired. He puts me in for a numbered Air Force job. I'm like, sir, I... I, I really like Hill Air Force Base and I've only been here for, you know, for 12 months. He goes, chief, it might take a couple of times for you to get picked up. And I said, I don't, I don't really, I don't think I could work for a general officer. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I just, you know, they, they, they just yeah, yeah. felt like they were in a different, different stratosphere category. You know what I'm thinking? It's like they put their pants on differently. You know what I mean? Right. They're, it was just maybe a little intimidating, but sure. some of that goodness I got though, when, um, like General Buchanan, when I was a command chief, he knew me as from the 18th ASOG, right? So he was CFAC and Ninth Air Force commander. So when I was at the 18th ASOG and we were doing decoration boards and all that other stuff, we were paneling and making sure the guys were getting what they needed with General Buchanan. You know, I met with him quite frequently. So I thought, this yeah. is a really cool cat, you know, a three-star. He's, he's, a, he's a good dude, good, good American, takes care, and he believes in us, right? Sure. And... Um, break, break. I'm in the desert at, as a command chief of the 386. And I get a phone call from General Buchanan saying, Hey, chief, saddle up. Uh, I need you to go do a, investigate a bomb drop. We dropped on a, on the wrong target and I need you. And I'm going to send the Colonel with, and so I'm a command chief now, but he used my tech P experience and we went, flew up to Mosul and, um, a tech P had, dropped the, uh, given the wrong coordinates, basically. Mm -hmm. It was in a flurry of action. Didn't kill anybody. We heard, oh, we heard some people. Well, we didn't kill any blue forces. Oh, okay. We did, we did, uh, we did kill some, some other folks, but, um, anyway, we had a chance to, uh, investigate and I got a chance to hang out with, uh, and, and drive, ride some convoys. And we, I nice. got, a, I got a little aggressive with, uh, cause, uh, some of the, the two air force colonels, one of them didn't want to do any of that. Yeah, I yeah. said, sir, you don't have to do any of that. I'll, I'll go out there. Well, I can't let you go out there and do it and you know, me not do it. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're saddle up. The battalion yeah. commander's asking us to go out and, and see what the, what it's like boots on the ground. So we did go down and search <laughs> missions. Uh, uh, oopsie. Probably went a That's little awesome. bit, went a little bit far, but, uh, <laughs> But again, you, those connections, all that connective tissue and why you uh, are get yourself in a position and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're bam and you take, take care of the warriors, taking care of warriors. Yeah. So Hill Air Force Base, I, I, I get picked to go to the third Air Force. I go to the, I go to, I fly to Germany and the night before I, I go visit my Ranger buddy, Mark Vlella. And, his uh -huh. and we drink like Vikings. We're up till like five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I go to get my rental car to go in to meet the, the bosses or the three stars exec. And uh, I was like, I'm getting ready to walk out the door. And Nina goes, what are you, where are you going? <laughs> and I said, I'm going on to base on ramp. So she goes, you can't drive. <laughs> She goes, you're, th there's no way you can drive. And I go, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. That, that, would, that, would, that, would, not that would not have been good. <laughs> so she drives me in, and I meet with, uh, I meet with the exec. And I'm, I'm hungover. But he's, yeah. he's doing the pre-feel, right? He's doing the feel-out kind of thing. Cause, and then it's not the next day. I think it was, that was a Sunday. So we meet for lunch, and we just we had a good time, you know, lunch. Sure, yeah. Nina comes, gets me, I sober up and we grab, grab the rental vehicle, go back in the next day. I report in to the general, three star, General Bishop, Rod Bishop. And um, again, I'm not wanting this job. Yeah. But I'm sitting here talking to a guy that is cool. 
he's a cool cat. And I'm thinking, well, I can't throw this interview. But I try, I kind of. But I did, and then I realized you know, this guy's a really good good guy. I, I like him, and um, I think it would be cool to work with a guy like this. He believes in us, right? He believes in the enlisted force. I mean, I worked with some officers that that just didn't do that, man. They they yeah. thought we were the second class citizens, right? Right. But as I am, you know, talking to him, I'm like, oh, this is maybe this would be cool. And so went to his house that night. He invited me over for dinner, and I talked to my wife Peggy. I go, hey Peggy, I what do I do for wine? She goes, well, I just was at the Chateau St. Michel uh, winery and pick up, see if they have a bottle of that. So I get a nice bottle of cab and I give it to his wife, Mary, and they meet me at the door and I give her a big hug. And I just felt like family right then and there. And then the next day calls me and he said, Hey chief, you're going to be my Huckleberry. And nice. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> we just moved to Hill Air Force Base. This crazy. <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, we leave Hill, we go to Germany, and uh, again, that connective tissue, we, we ramp up 3rd Air Force as a um, uh, combined joint task force head, uh, headquarters certification. And again, I'm working with folks from then uh, the COCOM gosh, Joint Forces Command, which mm -hmm. doesn't exist anymore, but right, right. we're, you know, working with people there and just, you know, all this connective tissue, then general luck, you know, meeting him and, you know, just boom, boom, boom. He's a great American and going through different, you know, PME and stuff like that. And, and then, uh, an opportunity, the general Bishop is uh, retiring and, you know, and we are getting a new third air force commander, general Breedlove. And I, I want general Breedlove to pick his own Huckleberry. I'd, I'd heard about General Breedlove, but didn't really know, know him mm -hmm. um, and, um, and met, met him a couple of times. But again, another great, great American. He would have been a good guy to work with. But he goes, so, you know, I can't wait to work with you. And I said, sir, I'm, I'm leaving. Well, it turns out that uh, we got a nomination list and it was Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa. And I'm like, I don't even know where Djibouti is, you know? I thought <laughs> right. it was on the backside of Japelvis. And so, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is, this is crazy. And we, uh, he goes, you know who the commander is, right? I said, I have no idea, sir. And he goes, it's Admiral Green. And I go, the deputy, or he was our JTF deputy commander. So I worked uh, with him and I didn't wow. realize. Yeah, so small, small roles, a one-star admiral. So I pick up the phone and I go, hey, Admiral, uh, I, I'd like to put, I'm putting in a package to the Air Force channels, right? I'm, he goes, you really want to come here? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. You know, I, I like to be in the, in the middle of something, right? Sure. If I'm going to yeah. wear a uniform, I want to be somewhere where I can, you know, affect warriors, right? And that's sure. so kind of close to, to that different yeah. capacity slightly. And, um, sure enough, he, uh, he goes, he calls me back. He goes, I'll tell you what, he goes, talk to your wife, talk to Peggy and, uh, and see if she's hip with that. And, and then call me back and, and let me know. So I call him back and I said, yeah, I'm coming. If, if you'll have me. And he goes, you're hired. So nice. he went outside the process. His C cell at that time was a Navy seal. And, uh, he, he put together all these packages. He was a real detail guy, you know, and, yeah. and it blew his mind that he just would pick me. But again, relationships matter. And he, for and sure. He, he knew me. So pick me. Africa was a baby that was just weird, just yeah. a strange, strange place. And, um, but again, having an impact on the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and civilians, the whole shooting match, it was just a fascinating time. And, um, uh, the qu quick, uh, story we'd go to places and Admiral and I, we'd go to different embassies and Hey, Kluke, how's it going? And, <laughs> and we'll look at me and go, how do you know these people? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been around a couple of days. And most of <laughs> yeah. them were soft background kind of folks and sure. doing, doing different things. And, but on occasion, some other ones. And uh, never forget when we, we, they did the, the pirate, if you remember the, the story with uh, Mersk, Alabama. And uh, while I was there during that time, when piracy was huge. And yeah. we did the we our, our airfield was a transfer point you know so we took 53 from the the surviving pirate right mm -hmm. and um but before the the 53 comes in an fbi jet lands 
and off walks this strapping dude. And he's walking up and I go, huh, that's Lance Keppel. I'm thinking to myself, that's pretty cool. And I'm standing there with my Navy Admiral and Lance comes up, gives me a big hug. Clue, how's it going? <laughs> gives me a big hug. And uh, my, my commander looks at me and he's like, how in the hell? He goes, now I've seen it all. You know, how, <laughs> how do you know the, these people? And, and it's just, it blew his mind. Oh, I'm bet. That I'll a guy bet. coming in to take a pirate, you know, back to the States, uh, you know, that would, would come in and know me. So yeah, yeah. Just fascinating. Funny, funny <laughs> stories. And, and so, yeah, so I, I, I'm sitting in Djibouti, and, uh, which is weird, but um, yeah, I get a call from, I get a call from an exec, right? Hey, um, do you have a couple minutes uh, to talk to uh, General Frazier? And I'm like, General Frazier, I don't even know who General Frazier is, right? Right. <laughs> And I said, sure, I, I, of course I do. He's a four-star general. And he goes, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, chief, I'm, I'm the, currently the vice chief of staff of the Air Force. I'm getting a job at the, as an ACC commander, and, and I, need a, I need a command chief. And, I said, and he said, I heard good things about you. And I said, well, don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, ACC, <laughs> that's a lot of freaking people. And I'm going, I tried to fake it till I made it, you know, and I, I faked it through a couple of, tours and and anyway long story short he hires me and i again unbelievable great american he and his wife bev are phenomenal human beings do i do anything for those folks and yeah. and and because they would do anything for us right for for our enlisted corps and the officer corps the whole shoot and match they were just an amazing team to be with and we yeah. did an amazing amazing things we traveled to faraway places and awesome and and general uh fingers golfing uh, another great american that we got a chance to hang out with and I just never forget every time we went somewhere i'd have to grab his hat pc and <laughs> i'd grab this and he'd get out of the go get out of the building to put his cover on and he'd be like ah, why doesn't i go here you go sir <laughs> all right thanks thanks chief but uh just freaking phenomenal phenomenal people and and again just i always said a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then and that's how yeah. that's how i rolled and i and there we were at acc just kicking ass taking names and um and developing our our airmen and and of course continuing combat operations and get, getting a chance to do uh, some amazing amazing things and and then he gets a job at transcom again he's a bomber pilot and they're they picked him for ACC. He was the first bomber pilot to be picked for ACC. And then now he's a bomber guy going to transcom. Wow. He was that good. I mean, he, he knew Capitol Hill like the back of his hand because he was kind of Lisa Rice's exact military oh, advisor okay. back in the wow. day. And he, he, he was that. he was the, uh, I and the T. And so he gets picked and I said, sir, just to let you know, you pick your own Huckleberry over there. You don't worry about me. Well, Bev didn't have much of that. So Bev and Peggy got along real well. So Jenna was kind of forced to take me with. And um, <laughs> so we got a chance to do some uh, big time with uh, General Frazier and his wife. And again, just great Americans. And yeah, so I, I still text, communicate with him, keep, keep in touch with him. And he's, he's great. And uh, again, the impact, uh, you never know what kind of impact you're going to have on people. And and sometimes when it comes around and I'll get an email or I'll get a text or I'll get a whatever. And they, the person will say, Hey, I, Hey, you didn't really maybe not remember me or whatever the case may be, but I just want to let you know, you, you changed my life or whatever. And that's pretty freaking oh, cool. Yeah. And I, and, and you get a spouse that will text you and say, Hey, that book that you gave us, um, you know, in defense of food or, you know, whatever saved our lives. You know, me, me and my husband, my husband worked with you and, and you, you talked about it one day and, um, you gave us a book and, and, you know, we're, we're changed people, you know, they drop 50 pounds a piece or whatever the case may be. And they're living better, healthier lives and all that other stuff. And it's just yeah. really cool. And you never For know. Sure. So just show up, bring it every day. 
right? And that's kind of, you know, I graduated the military and co- one of the coolest things I didn't, I forgot to send you the picture, but my mom was able to make it down for my graduation and I call it the graduation, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Graduating <laughs> 30 years of the military and she goes, oh my God, she's looking around and there's, you know, we're at Transcom and we're eight headquarters of AMC and the generals, the admirals uh, are there and, you know, from the staff and yeah. Goes, there are so many stars in here. This is crazy, <laughs> you know. And you know, she was a child bride back in World War II when Dad got out right, of World right. War II. You know, she was eighteen years old, and wow. um, so she didn't get much of an opportunity to hang out in the military. But she saw a little, just a tinge of it. Yeah. But, um, but it was cool to have Mom there. She passed the next uh, the next year, but oh, wow, man, she, but she was able to make it. Yeah, that was. Yeah. It, it, huge pride thing for her it was it was pretty incredible so oh i'm sure yeah yeah her baby boy yeah doing great things yeah yeah it was pretty cool yeah and of course all my tech p bros came yeah. down and we i told the club um it was epic i'm gonna tell you <laughs> as you can imagine right oh for sure i, I can't I, I can't imagine that actually it's, i, I mean it you, was off the hook they they honored me like i would have never imagined i told the club manager i but like a couple of days before I said, you guys may want to stock up because, <laughs> and have, have enough staff because we're bringing it. And she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Like we hear this all the time. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I could tell she was maybe, maybe trying to doubt me just a little bit. And I just said, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's going to be a big, big time. Anyway, fast forward to the event band plays. I jump up, I do a song with the band freaking <laughs> it was off. It was out of control. It was out of control. <laughs> that t- my mom, they take, they did the tape. You know, they rolled me, and, uh-huh. and he was not supposed to do that with the chief. And I, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> hey, if you if you don't get rolled, yeah, you, you did something wrong. That's right. You That's right. A good human, right? That's so right. So my mom, you know, so my ranger buddies are all up there going, all right, you know, t- walking my mom through it, going, all right, Olga, you don't worry about this. You know, he's okay. This is just all part of the deal. And we drank him. I think we drank him out of booze. And I went to, I went to pay the bill uh, a couple of days later. And the club oh. manager goes, you guys grossed our, our monthly. She bet we bettered a <laughs> monthly gross on that. She goes, we never have parties <laughs> like that. Never. Everybody says they have parties. Yeah, you guys actually did it, and I apologize for underestimating you. <laughs> you and the party, and I'm like, see, I kind of told you. Yeah, you told, told her. You. I told you. <laughs> it was freaking epic. Oh man, epic. Yeah. that's perfect. So, yeah, what a what a what a salute to I don't know I I, I don't I didn't deserve it I I can guarantee you that but but I I faked it as much as I possibly could and um man it, it was. And I still keep in touch, you know, with a lot of the bros and not, not as much as I should. Sure. sure. But, uh, but it was, it was fantastic. And then I rolled up into this place and wife kicked me out of the house, uh, pretty quickly because she works from home and online and I was bugging her too much. Yeah. <laughs> and my, and my neighbor owns a school bus company, uh, just south there, about 10 miles south of here in Eau Claire and, uh, said, I need you. And when, when somebody says, I need you. You, you know, we, it's not, I want you all right, when I need you, cause there's a difference, you know, and mm-hmm. that's when some of those commanders or some of those pe- people, those hiring authorities, when they say, I need you, that, that's a, that changes the dynamic and, for sure. And brother Ray, uh, who's my neighbor, uh, he said, I need you. And I went, damn, man, you need me. <laughs> I had some other opportunities, but I took it and, and I, I help lead the, the organization. We have about 200 employees and we freaking bring it every day. And those warriors yeah. get out there and get after it. And I get behind the wheel of the school bus and it's freaking outstanding. <laughs> I know, think that's it, so awesome. Having an impact <clears throat> on those little future great Americans yeah. is such, it's such a, it's a big impact. It's bigger than mm. you think. And again, you, the way we show up as humans um, makes a difference. And it makes a difference, good, bad, or indifferent, right? Sure. But if you decide to make it good, if you decide to have a positive impact and you feel that and you live that, every day is a bonus mantra, 
people see that and they want to, yeah. they want to be a part of that and they oh, want to, yeah. they connect and they trust and trust is one of the biggest things. So when, when they trust you on that school bus and things go south or, you know, the bus is getting a little crazy, you, you can jerk a knot through that pretty quickly mm -hmm. and they go, Oh, and they straighten up because they trust you. And I'm super playful with them. You know, I, you know, I, I'm a jokester. I do all that <laughs> other stuff, but when it's, when it's game time, when it's game on and they need to, you know, put a round turn and a half hitch in it, they do it. And even nice. as a sub, you know, I don't have, I don't have a per permanent route. I sub on these different routes. You show up good. You show up positive. They're watching you. And I think one of the, one of the key feedback mechanisms I learned early on in this and my favorite routes to drive are special needs. Yeah. Those special, it, certainly the nonverbal ones too. They watch you like a hawk <laughs> and they will actually take on your emotions, your feelings. And I caught this one day I'm driving. There's this really excitable guy and he's back there and he's probably, he was at the time, he was probably a junior or senior in high school. And, um, but he nonverbal, and he's, he's back there and he's watching. And, you know, I look at, check the mirrors quite often. And I don't know, something was bugging me that day. And I just kind of had probably a serious look on my face. And I look up in the mirror and I see him with the same serious look on his face. And I went, oh my God, he's channeling my energy. Yeah. And I went, oh, man. so I put a big smile on, you know, that, you know, that <laughs> you grew up with mostly, right? I put a big yeah, smile yeah. on and I go and I give him the eyes and, and then he gets, you know, he snaps out of it and he's like, he's watching. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it, it, it took a special needs kiddo to make me realize if you're not, if you're not in it to win it, then you're not, you're not being that positive. I mean, sure. you're, you're going to make a difference regardless. Right. So if right. you're, if you're dead serious or you're, you know, having a bad day, other people are going to pick up on that quickly. Right. And we know that as, as humans, sometimes we forget that though. For sure. And we forget when we show up, we go, ah, and I'm looking at the time trying to honor that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to be hard pressed to do an hour with you. I'm not kidding you. No, this is, no, you're, uh, yeah, this is great. I'm, I'm looking at going. <laughs> 43 minutes shut up marty good guy no no I, not at all no i mean i mean no way this is no please don't think that at all but but i want to say that when you told me that you were that you did this bus the bus thing it it just made sense because you've always been the kind of guy you've always been such a hard charging warrior but you've also been like a caring warrior you know you were always i mean and i remember the story i went, I went to the competition when i was from germany one year and that was the year that um, Rob Arcirio and Paul Ford won the whole thing. And the 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 emotion you showed during their winning of the competition that year just spoke volumes about how you are as a person. I mean, when you say you care about your people, and when you say you you go to bat for them, and you and you play defense for them, and you you build them up. I mean, that's that defines you. I mean, you yes, you're you're a great warrior, and you're you know a great ranger, but. The, the way you care about people is what always stuck with me, you know? Well, thanks. I, I again, you, you're making, I, I think, I just think you might have just a, uh, elevated, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, I don't think I'm that guy, but I, I, I truly appreciate that. And you're right. I hearken back to those days training those guys and, um, you know, cause the year before Paul and I won that and I, and right. That's I, we right. Yeah. It, we, so Paul and I won it and I, I said, I just want one of those. I wanted one of those, you know, I wanted to be a champion. Yeah. You know, I wanted the big, big trophy. And they had it backwards back then in my mind. I had individual trophies, a big one. And then the team trophy was a little one. Yeah. It didn't make any sense to me. And I, and yeah, it, I think sense changed that. Yeah. Know, yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a bigger deal being a team now. Right. Right. And I, and I thought, you know what, uh, any, I think this, any, anybody can win this. Can you train the t the next team? to, to right. win it. And, and Robin and, and Paul were not the most physical guys. Right. And so we worked really, really hard at doing that. Uh, the mental aspect, they, they ran circles. For sure. I feel like yeah. around me, even, you know, I was like, Holy <laughs> balls. Hey, you know, I felt like adult and you know, the way those guys prepared 
were, uh -huh. was second to none. But the physical aspect of it, you know, that's where, you know, I, mean, I like shooting and all that other stuff. But sure, uh, sure. But I, that whole package, I love doing that stuff and I love training. I said, if we can, yeah. you know, if we could train the next champions, uh, that's, I'm done. I'm good. Call yeah. it a win. Well, you did it. I always felt like you cared about your people. You cared about your guys. You were very, you know, you're, you're just a great leader. And I, I, I respect you a great deal for, for that. So, Thank and you're you. a fantastic role model, fantastic example for others to follow for sure. Uh, I, that's why I feel so. Well, thanks brother. I really appreciate that. You, yeah. I mean, you, I looked at the list and again, I'm not very good at listening and all this stuff, but I'm going to pick up on some of the podcasts that, uh, that you have already done. And cause I looked at some of the names on there and I'm like, man, these guys are freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you, some heavy hitters for you sure. You got some he heavy hitters in there for <laughs> sure. Yep. Yep. Amen. Well, um, yeah, I don't want to take up much more of your time. I appreciate you doing this. I mean, I know uh, it was, you know, Ivan called you out of the blue and you were, of course, cool to, to do it. And um, I, one more thing I want to say, and this is, I, I keep hearkening back to the way you care about dudes. You probably don't remember this, but I was redeploying one time through Bragg to go to Benning and um, you yourself came out and picked me up at the airport and took me to wherever I was going. I, like I said, you probably don't remember, you probably picked up a ton of people, but I always thought that was so cool that like the 18th ASOG chief is coming out and picking up guys off the flight line and giving them a ride to their billets or whatever. I thought that was so cool. And I just want I, I appreciate that. And I, I always think about that every once in a while. I'm like, he probably doesn't even remember picking me up, but I don't remember when it was. It was, um, it was between 01 and 07, something like that. But yeah, I, I have, I have, vague recollection oh i i, I mean i know you uh, yeah. in that we've crossed paths multiple times right mm -hmm. and so i recognize you and to your point i i did i mean i i liked being in the middle and then yeah. you know what if i can't go to battle i'm damn sure gonna love up on the on the warriors that are headed to battle and the right. warriors that are coming home from battle yeah. you know so I'm, as long as we're in the fight you know, you're either yeah. out there or you're, you're definitely doing everything you can to support those that are, that are in the fight. So, so that's cool. And I, cool. I dig this because this helps everybody. It helps everybody kind of walk through and, and reconnect maybe and, yeah. and get in, you know, feel the love again. I, I'm, I fail to mention names, many names, yeah. hundreds of names of warriors that not only did I fight with, but, um, but just love, you know, because awesome humans, you know. Right. There's just so many that There's it's so hard. Many. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. I, I'm gonna tell you. I give a shout out to as a command chief. You know, I I had executives, assistants, right? Yeah. They those poor souls didn't know <laughs> what they were getting into with me because you know I'm a I'm an open kimono guy, you know, and I probably right, right. a little bit to a fault. <laughs> My wife would tell me a lot to a flaw, but, but, um, those warriors that helped me be, be good, as good as I was, and they, I wouldn't have been anywhere near as good, uh, without them. They set me up for so much success yeah. and, and you know, like at the ACC level, I had have two of them. And so two of those folks at a time <laughs> had to take care of me. And that was a handful and a half. <laughs> And so those, all those execs that I had were, I give all credit to, yeah. they lined me up, they set me up for success. They made sure I didn't forget stuff. They didn't, I mean, they were, they were rock stars, yeah. rock stars, absolute right rock on. stars. Yeah. Again, you don't, none of us get here without any, without a little love. And it's again, a team effort for sure. Freaking team effort, man. Life yeah. is a team sport. For sure. And the more teammates you have that are good, uh, it's nice to have those good ones around you, the better off that life is. And if you're not making stories, something's, something's slacking, man. So I won't do that. I'll do one more little story. Uh, talking about Please. making stories. Um, I was at a, uh, I think I was at ACC at the time. I was. I was ACC command chief. And we had a guy that, that at Beale Air Force Base, he went in for a simple operation. He lost both of his legs. Oh my God. I met this guy and he, he was a maintainer or something. I can't remember what he was, but he was a big Hulk of a dude. And he, I mean, a big, big American, right? Big arms, big everything else. But now he's got no legs, right? Fast forward, 
we're at a we're at a banquet at the uh, in DC in that big hotel. It's right on the water there. I forget what uh-huh. it's called, but you know, everybody knows it. And we're we're all in mess dress uniform. He's in a wheelchair. He's in mess dress. I got my mess dress on, and I'm the command chief for Air Combat Command. Right. I'm drinking some JD, and uh, he's drinking. I said, hey, "What do you, what do you want there, warrior?" And he says, "I like a Jack and Coke." And I go, "All right, hey, it's a guy." <laughs> so I get him a Jack and Coke, and we drink a couple of these. And all of a sudden, I we I get a little tug, and out shoots his wheelchair, and we're on the floor wrestling. <laughs> so I'm wrestling with a guy that's bigger than I am on the top. I was going to say he's a big guy. <laughs> he's big, but he has no legs. And this guy's a world-class, I mean, he was like a state, like a four-time state wrestling champ. And, wow. And I'm going to tell you that people were mortified. In now, your some, mess dress. <laughs> some, people, some people were going, oh, my God, this is awesome. And other yeah. people were like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for the, the command chief for yeah. – for doing this. This is, you know, he's intoxicated clearly or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Well, I may have been a little bit, I'm not going to lie, but we're <laughs> rolling around on the ground and we, we're done. We get done and we're freaking laughing so hard. We're about peeing ourselves. All right. And I go to pick him up to put him in the chair and I, he's, he's only half a guy. So I get him under his arms and I lift up and I go, Holy shit, boss, this guy is heavy. So I get him up in the, I hike him up in the chair and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Well, <clears throat> we do it. One, we do it one more time. And, oh, yeah. and again, it, it was fun. We had a blast. And I, and I thought to myself, <laughs> I could see that I could feel and see the look on his face. Like he, he was so freaking excited and happy. Here he is wrestling oh, yeah. with a command chief in, in our dress uniforms, our mess dress right. uniforms. And he was so freaking happy, so tickled. Yet there are other people that don't see this. They see the ugliness of it. And I yeah. look at it, I look at the warrior aspect and go, man, this guy never felt more whole for sure since, since he lost his legs. Right. And you know, we've, we, we yucked it up. We had a great time. And then the next day, a first sergeant stopped me. He goes, chief, I, I just want to let you know, many won't give you this feedback, but, um, that was embarrassing. I was embarrassed for you, blah, blah, blah. And I, I let him, I let him talk. And I said, I, I'm sorry you feel that way for a certain, but, um, I'm going to tell you this, that, that airman, he has never felt so loved, uh, bef- than, than this, but especially from a military person. For right? sure. He, he felt like a normal human being at that particular moment right. that we were rolling on that ground and we, we had an absolute blast. So if you missed that, I'm sorry, so yeah. you, you missed out on a great thing. And, um, it, you know, again, people view things differently and I get it, but, uh, when you get it right, you know it and yeah. they, they give you the immediate feedback, whether they're nonverbal, whether they're, they're verbal and maybe don't have everything you have. Yeah. They'll give they'll give you that love, man, and that's, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Yeah, just think if you would have like shunned him or said, "Oh, that, this is an appropriate son," you know, he he felt totally worse than anything like that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, if you pull me, you pull an arm drag with me, I'm, we're going down. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't care if you. <laughs> well, you got you have to. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> well, fast forward. I did that a little bit. We were at the Tech Pre reunion in Nashville, and um, Chachi's bride, Allie. We were coming back, and of course, we had we may have consumed a little, maybe an over overage. The four of us are walking back: me, Peggy, Ali, and Chachi. And she leans into me, and boom, like that, we're on the ground rolling. And I went, <laughs> "This is," I, and she is good. Is she? <laughs> She's strong, and she knows how to wrestle. I know, right on. We get up. We're laughing again. We're almost peeing ourselves. We're laughing. We get up. You know, Chachi gets a little video of it. And, sure, um, sure. and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And um, <laughs> she goes, yeah, I grew up with a bunch of wrestlers in the family, state champions and all that stuff. So she goes, I, I wrestle. And then you thought it was going to be a pushover and she showed you. And then, of course, at the banquet night in, you know, nice clothes, sport coat, you know, whatever. <laughs> 
she had a pantsuit on. She should have, if she had, she had a dress on, it would have been probably a different story, but all right, all right. we did it again right there on that, <laughs> rolling around on the floor. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So the last time we didn't do it. So the last reunion, we we said, okay, no, no wrestling. And yeah, <laughs> try to keep that pack. Stay on our feet this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, it looks like a, you know, this big bad guy beating up on a girl, but you know, she, she had as much fun as I did, you know, it was yeah. fun. It's, it was fun. <laughs> Good stuff. That's awesome. Is there anything I could do for you, JD? I don't think so. No, I mean, this, this was awesome. I mean, this, uh, this was exactly how I thought it was going to be. And I, I can't thank you enough for doing it. I mean, you're, you've always, I've always, you've always been somebody I looked up to and I, this was really great. I can't, I can't, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Really. I appreciate it. You're too kind, JD. Well, thanks for, thanks for doing this. And it's, again, you, you impact a lot of people by doing stuff like this and, uh, my, my interview aside, but, uh, but again, I like to thank all the warriors that I served with and man, they're freaking so cool. So yeah. cool to be connected with a community that loves and cares about other humans and I For think sure. it's cool. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get these these stories out and these guys on here because there's so many good dudes that are, you know, that people shouldn't know about, you know, should, people should hear about. So and just and like you are definitely one of them. So I appreciate it, Chief. Thanks, brother. Oh, it's Marty. Right. It's always Marty. I know. Chief, I know you're gonna say. I, I, <laughs> no, you do, Marty, man. That's he, that, yeah. Chief is long the ago. old days. All right. That's old. That's old days, man. Okay. The only hard day was yesterday, man. Right on. Right on. Okay. Take care, brother. Okay. I'll see you later. Peace.